Well, today on Nation Window Cleaners Podcast, we're talking all about how to get window cleaning customers. Lots of different ways, but it's the concepts that matter and why you may not be getting as many as you want or what you can do to get more. So stay tuned to WCR Nation. What's up, everybody? Jersey here from windowcleaner.com, and you are here. What is up? If it's your first time here, have a look around. Uh, Podcasts have been going on for seven years. In the seventh year? It's crazy. Uh, Tons of content to watch back on. If you like what you see or just want to do me a favor, talk about it. Put it out on a uh, forum, post something, do something, tell your friends, like it, do all that stuff. It really helps show out. Hopefully you get something out of it. Uh, But today we are talking about getting customers and not a the ways to get customers, but more or less how you get customers. There's like a concept of getting a customer that people really kind of lose sight of sometimes. And the big thing is when you look at like groups and people talking, it's confusion. There's a lot of like door knocking and you know, I hate door knocking and they're like, they're just putting stuff out there and they're not like understanding the concept of like getting a customer that makes sense. And I'll tell you, if you're new and you're doing door knocking, that's great for now. Like you get a customer, you could do the work today. Like it brings in money. It's like the job part, right? But it doesn't build a long-term business. And I know there's door knocking people who, by the way, there was, wasn't door knocking like a couple years ago. There's like content producers that put the stuff out and now all of a sudden everybody thinks that's really what you do. But it's not our market. It's not our people. Anyway, I won't get into that. But Selling yourself is a concept in its own. And there's a way you need to think about it that you may not be thinking about it, which is cryptic. I'll just dive into it. One of the things that you need to do is understand what we're selling. This isn't anything. You could be a car salesman. A car salesman does not sell cars. A window cleaner does not sell clean windows. A... uh, Pressure washer does not sell clean siding because the item itself is not needed. Let me let me digress. Let me jump out of our industry. Go to cars. You do not need a car. There's buses. There's Ubers, taxis, bicycles. You don't need a car. So what are you getting with a car? Well, when somebody goes and buys a car... They're actually getting convenience. They're getting um, a way to get somewhere on their own terms. Like if it's a low-end car. Think of the basic utility of a car. If it's a high-end car, say it's a Rolls-Royce. Well, you're not just getting the convenience of a car. You're getting a Rolls-Royce. The luxury, the comfort right? You're getting the experience. You're getting the pleasure of being able to drive it or be driven in it. Now, if you're selling a Lamborghini or a Ferrari, you're not selling the luxury of being able to be in it. You're selling the excitement, the sport, the turning heads, the attention, the noise, the feeling. Understand what you're selling. It's not a car. It's not clean windows. And a lot of people miss this. A lot of people think that for some reason we somehow have a a need for our service. There's no need. We're a luxury. Like if you don't have clean windows, you don't die. Yeah, if you're a business and you don't have clean windows, you don't get as many customers. I get that. But we're a luxury. What we do in a residential space is a luxury. What we do in a route space is utilitarian a lot of benefits if it's a gross looking store people aren't going to come in that's what they're selling in a house you can't sell it the same and go well i'd well, love to clean your windows in your home because if it's gross people won't come in and buy t-shirts and you're like what it's different things you're selling different things you're not selling the clean window you're selling the free time i always make this analogy but what if uh What if the husband usually cleans the windows? 
Now I know we sell to the wife usually. Um, 90, almost 90% of our customers that we talk to is actually the woman, not the man. Maybe different in your business, maybe it's not. But who are you t- selling to? Who, who's the decider? Right? If it's the wife who's the decider and they're having people over, well, why are they paying to have their windows done? It's not so Mima can see her backyard. No. It's so that people don't go in her house and think it's gross and think that she can't do, you know, her housework or keep up her house. If they want it done because the husband always does it and she doesn't like him on the ladder, it's the safety of having us do it. If it is the husband you're talking to, he doesn't want to spend all weekend doing more chores, right? He's got a little bit of money. Weather's nice. He wants to go be golfing. Well, we will sell you the opportunity to be able to golf this weekend. Those are the reasons people are buying. They're buying something other than the actual item. When you go into a grocery store and you buy protein shakes, or you go into the grocery store and you buy candy, those are two things. They're both something you eat or drink, whatever. But there's very different reasons you're getting them. Different packaging. Different spots in the grocery store. They're not just selling groceries. Groceries are a category of a thing, but they're selling. Candy is always in bright colored packages because it's fun. It's a treat. It's a thing. It's a woo. Nobody has it because it's got vitamins and minerals. But if you get a protein drink or something, the whole sales is different. The colors are different. The, the images are different. You're selling health. There's somebody super sweaty, motivated on the front. That's their, their, their packaging. Every industry and every product, they understand what they're selling. And it is not the thing that they're actually selling. Right? So understand what you're selling. Because that changes everything. It changes the talk. It changes the, the verbiage. It changes absolutely everything. But this isn't something you just like throw out and like, oh, all right, oh, okay, that's what I'm doing. No. Who's your customer? Who are you selling this to? Who's buying? And then you can find out what it is, right? If, again, you go back to the decision maker for this particular project, who is it? Is it a man or a woman, typically? Is it a um, mother or um, someone with no kids? Is it someone with a first floor house or is it somebody in a two story? Is it somebody with a backyard? Is it somebody on a rental? Is it somebody who owns their home? Is it somebody who has an amazing view? Maybe you're in a beach town or on a lake. You're doing a lot of lake homes. What is a lake home doing with clean windows versus somebody in a suburb? Well, somebody with a postage stamp size yard is not going to be buying because of the amazing view. But the lake home is. They bought a lake home to see the lake, right? Understanding who's buying allows you to understand how you're selling. And when you look at all of this and you're like, well, this is just kind of getting a little bit complicated. It seems like there's a lot to it. And just tell me like the one thing I should do. There is no one thing. One of the, the worst questions I always get asked, I get asked so much. People go, hey, what can I do to get more customers? There's, there's no answer to that. I mean, do everything. Oh, you don't have the budget? There's no, there's like such a, like, what can I do to win a race? What? Be faster. I don't, like, there's so many things. Well, how do you get faster? Then you train. What kind of race? Like, there's so many pieces to it. So the the whole, how do I get more customers is an impossible question. Well, what are you doing now? I do Facebook ads. That still doesn't tell me anything. Are they good? They probably suck if you're not getting people. Right? What's your ad spend? Who are you targeting? How are you targeting? What are the schemes? How much split testing? Like there's so many pieces to the puzzle. But the concepts are how you implement everything. This is the reason that, you know, they say um, 90% of businesses fail. Well, yeah, 
Kind of, technically, but that's because they don't know business. You can have a really, really good product and go out of business. That's like a thing, right? You, you can not understand the market, not understand the customer, not understand the fill in the blank, AKA Blockbuster. Biggest companies. If you're as old as I am, you remember going to Blockbuster on like a Friday. Oh man, going to check out the new releases. Maybe your video games. You could rent the video game up to five days. It was a thing. Huge. They were everywhere. Packed. The concept was phenomenal. How much they made on a video. And, you know, they had to rent something three times that's paid for the rest of its profit. Fantastic, but they didn't understand the market. They didn't understand who they were selling to or what the customer actually wanted. The customer didn't want to rent VHSs anymore when DVDs came out, but they were reluctant to go to DVDs. There was so many other things streaming started. They got in the screen, streaming game after Blockbuster was already failing. Like They didn't understand their customer. They said, well, we sell videos and this is what we do. You're going to like it or you're going to leave. Well, they left and now there's no Blockbusters. A big company can still not understand. Little companies, it's even harder. How many people have you seen out there that just don't get it? I know there's a lot of trolls in a lot of these groups, but they just don't get the idea of business. And they want to tell you how smart they are by the thing that they figured out. And if they just do good work, they'll get customers. And if they just come in cheaper than everybody else, they'll be able to do more work and get more. They don't understand. They're not willing to learn, and that's okay. That's why your business is going to be bigger, better, faster growing, stronger than theirs. But the concepts are all underlying. It's what are you actually selling? Not clean windows. And who are you selling to? Like if you speak Spanish, I cannot speak English to you and have you understand and vice versa. I need to speak Spanish for you to understand. I need to know how you talk. I need to know how you listen. I have to speak for you to hear. And it's me who has to change, not you, right? If I go to France and I start speaking to somebody who doesn't know English, it's my fault. I'm not going to convey a message. I'm talking stuff they can't even understand. If I go to, I finally learn French and I give them, you know, I can speak fluent French and I go over to, you know, China and start talking to somebody I can speak fluent French. It doesn't matter. Now the customer's different. They hear things differently. Who you have dictates how to talk to them. You have to know that. And when you say, well, yeah, I have men and women. I have old and young. And I have houses. I have big houses, lake houses, small houses. I have lots of people. Right. But each person speaks differently. There's a lot of people in this country that speak different languages. Again, I cannot speak to them in one language, right? And when we talk about all this and, you know, the avatar and who you're advertising to and stuff, there is a main uh, customer of yours. It's called an avatar. And even if it's 51% of the people fall into this category, it doesn't mean you're discluding everybody else. It means you're connecting with the most amount of people. On an individual basis, it's that one person that you're talking to. It's the one person who's listening and concepts and catching everything. When you find out who's buying, you get how to speak to them. And you find out why they're actually buying. Like, if I don't play golf and you tell me how it's going to free up some time so I can go play golf, that doesn't talk to me, right? Now I got to stop and do the whole, you know, spiel. Shameless plug. I'm a rep for windowcleaner.com. One of the reasons I do what I do is hopefully to help you. And even if it sinks a little bit in, you're absolutely brilliant at what you do. But it's nice to absorb things and catch things. And maybe something I say triggers something in your head and you think about a concept or do something. If at all, any of this has ever helped or you just want to be an awesome person. My name is Jersey with windowcleaner.com and I am a sales rep. I am not a... I'm going to push you into some. I just want to help you answer questions. I want to put your orders in. I want to help you if you have questions and you want to ask me what my thoughts are. I'm going to tell you my actual thoughts. I'm not going to tell you what's most expensive or stuff I don't like. If you ask me and I don't like it, I'm going to tell you I don't like it. Here's something better. I want to be a resource for you. But I get paid by putting orders in. That's what I do. 
So if I could do that for you, it costs you nothing extra, and I get a cut, and I can buy more hair gel. I guess that's what everybody likes to say. So my number is 862-312-2026. It's a sell, so call me, text me, smoke signals. Do it, little or small. I just I'd love to put your orders in. By the way, I always say this too, if you're doing it on a weekend or like after hours, like we can only ship, you know, what, nine to four is our shipping times really in the East Coast. So if it's after that, don't worry, absolutely locks it in for any sales, anything like that. But if I don't get back to you and it's two in the morning, relax, I'll get back to you as soon as I get in the morning. Um, I would love to help. And if you haven't yet, go and get a subscription to the AWC magazine. It's awcmag.com, the American window cleaner magazine. Yes, a real paper magazine that really comes to your door every single month. And it comes with an actual sticker sheet of awesome stickers for you as a window cleaner. Uh, also help support the industry. So go to awcmag.com, get a subscription, be absolutely radical. Whew. Okay, shame is plug done. But one thing I do as a rep is answer questions. One thing you do in sales is answer questions. Now, you're gonna say to me, just because a customer comes to me doesn't mean they have questions. They absolutely do. Every single person that comes to you has questions. If they're new. The only people who don't are like referrals who are like, ah, Jan told me to book with you guys. You're amazing. So I just want to get on the schedule. Sweet. Jan already helped. But everybody else, when they call, they have questions. We're like, oh, yeah, they need a quote. They need a quote. They need to know that you're there. But they need a, a reason to call to open a conversation for you to tell them why you're the best. Too many people are worried there. Oh, man. Well, it's, they call for a quote because they're checking other... No, they're not. They're, they're, they're calling to get an idea, but that's the initial reason they're calling is for the money, the quote, right? The price. But they're going to ask you a bunch of stuff. Tell me why I choose you. Tell me why you're the best. If you don't know that, that's your problem. Well, we're the cheapest. No, 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 no. That doesn't mean best. Cheapest has never, ever, ever meant best. Why do I choose you? If I call and go, hey, I'm just looking to get a quote on my windows. Well, I want to know ballpark. But I really want to get a feel for you, a vibe of whatever. Answer questions they're asking without asking the questions. Right? Hey, choosing us. It may be your first time ever getting window cleaning. But we have a 100% satisfaction guarantee. I know this is a new service. You don't know what to expect. We're going to make it absolutely amazing for you. If not, you're not going to pay a dime. Okay. That one thing I just said took away all the, well, what if you don't do a good job? What if you don't? Uh, I really got to get a good. And in your head, as the business owner, you're like, well, I'm not going to do stuff for free. Right. And you would never, ever leave a customer's house unhappy. If they're unhappy or they call you, then you make them happy. If you, you know, somebody's like, hey, you didn't do a good job, and you're like, mm, tough, then you're a bad business owner, right? So the concept is, is to just let them know the same thing you're doing anyway. I'm going to make sure you're happy. You're not going to pay me until you're happy. No one is ever like, this is a terrible job. Here's your payment. Be like, whoa, whoa, no, 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 don't pay me. Let me fix this. Let me make this amazing for you before you do anything. And if I can't, which... Gosh, 16 years of business, I think maybe has been like two people, maybe. I can't even remember. I know one person was just that person who complains about everything I got the feeling of. They have uh, Google reviews. They have like 32 reviews, all one star. They just go out and leave people bad reviews, hoping to get free services. I know that blacklist. I don't do their service again, whatever. I cut my losses. Every other person I left with them being happy. Oh, wow. Okay. Well, that takes away a lot of my, you know, whatever. But like when I'm done, you know, what are you, they want to know what are you going to do? How are they going to feel when it's done? You have to find out what they're looking for. Ask the questions. And let me ask, what are you looking to, what made you give us a call? Like, what? well, I got family coming, you know, or, 
you know, my brother, um, he got his windows done, and I didn't even really know the service was there, and I think it's such a great idea. I'd be really, right? Um, you know, I was in the hospital, and uh, I ended up spraining my ankle, and just I don't want to get on that. Find out why they're calling you. Find out why they're calling you. Hey, you know what? Uh, my windows just haven't been cleaned in like 10 years. You know, I'm getting kind of tired of it. They don't want to do their own windows. That's why I haven't done them in 10 years. Oh, oh, I know. It's a huge pain in the butt to do this. You know, we are in and out super fast. Absolutely painless. They're going to look amazing. And we get you on a program. We can upkeep them so you don't even have to worry about getting dirty windows. We can keep them clean for you. Like, find out what they're talking about. Their questions are the reasons they called you. They are not booking. They're not done. They still have questions. Answer the questions. Find out what their questions are. Answer them. If I call you and I ask all the questions and all your answers answered my questions, perfect, let's do it. Look, I got nothing else. But if I call you for something and you don't answer my questions, I go, well, all right, let me... Um, yeah, let me let me think it over and let me talk to my husband. Let me let me uh yeah, let me uh mull it like what are you mulling over? Something I didn't answer. I didn't answer something. I I didn't convey that you have more questions and now you have to think about trying to find the answers to the questions. I can do that, but I need to know what the questions are. You can do that, but you need to know the answers to questions. If every question's answered and you just let them know that it's the absolute best thing ever, they're gonna buy. That's the trigger. The buying trigger is what makes a sale a sale. Like getting a customer is when they actually go, yeah, let's do it. That's the customer. Now they're your customer. A buying trigger is super important. The trigger, which most of you, not most, well, maybe most, a lot of you don't realize the way subconscious works for people. And... If I want something, for whatever the reason is, when I want it, and I'm absolutely certain I want it, I buy it. The trigger is there. Fear of missing out. Fear of loss. Right? You've heard those terms. That's where when you put something and you have a coupon, right? Book now and get a free gutter cleaning expires at the end of the month. That's a sense of urgency. If I call after that, I'm going to lose it. Call now. I need to book now. I need to get that now. All my questions are answered. Well, don't sit on it. Let's do it now. Buying trigger. You have to figure out the trigger. And more importantly, you have to ask for it. It's great when a customer, you do, okay, cool. Well, let's book it. Yeah, awesome. Shut up and book it. But up until that point, you need to ask. Go over everything. Oh, here's it is, blah, 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 blah. I'm going to not say yes or no, but I'm going to go into my favorite type of clothes is an assumptive clothes for a customer. Because when they call and they do this and I get everything and I got all the questions, I know who I'm talking to, what I'm talking to, I know the price, I know whatever. Great. Awesome, Mrs. Jones. So pricing-wise, looking at your house, counts, all the windows, you're talking $299. That's going to be inside, outside, Track sales and frames, whole kit and caboodle. And we can get you done on September 7th. And it's going to be between 9 and 10 in the morning. That works. That's it. Now they have everything. They have to come out and ask me a question. Or they go, okay, great, that works. Or you go... Okay, Mrs. Jones, blah, 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 blah. We can get you done. Uh, September 7th, it'd be between 9 and 10, or the 8th at uh, between 1 and 2. Which one works better for you, morning or afternoon? I didn't say no. Both of the answers I asked you for are going to end in a close. I assumed you called and I gave you all the answers. I know I'm the best choice, so which one did you want? You're not going to be like, well, no, I'm not. Well, I didn't answer. Oh, oh no, no worries. Is any other questions on this or anything else I can help you kind of understand? I didn't tell you something if you didn't buy. Buying triggers are that. If I can make it absolutely simple, within one minute of a conversation, I can look your house up. I can ask the questions. I can do everything. Great. I got a price. I've already told you about all of our stuff. 
your total is $299. That's for your inside and outside of all your windows. That also, of course, has a 100% satisfaction guarantee. You don't pay a dime until you're happy. It also has our seven-day Mother Nature guarantee. Remember, if it rains within seven days, just call us. Let us know which windows are spotted. We'll come back and make them look beautiful. Now, we can do all this. It's going to be the first appointment we have. It's the 24th of September between uh, 8 and 9 in the morning. Or I can do the 27th of September, and that would be between 1 and 2 in the afternoon. Does a morning appointment work better or afternoon for you? I've told them everything. Their trigger is, I'm going to get this done now. The reason they called you is to get this done. They did. The, yes, I, I can't get you done today. But as soon as it's booked, it's done in their head. You've ended it. You've told them everything they need to know. They've got an awesome vibe for you. They say yes. That buying trigger is the ask. It's a sense of urgency in marketing and advertising and whatever. Only 10 slots left. Only 7 slots left. Sense of urgency. Right? Call right now and get a free gutter cleaning. Always add value. Don't do a coupon percentage. A percentage, uh, it's not money. I have to spend money. That's all I'm thinking. If I, Here's $50 towards your window cleaning. That's free money. Even though it's the same thing as doing a coupon or a percentage off. But it's free. It's a buying trigger. Hey, we want to give you $50 towards your window cleaning just to try us out. Remember, 100% satisfaction guarantee. So if you don't like what we're doing, we're going to make you happy. Right? Remove all questions. When there's no questions, they buy and that's your trigger. Now you got the customer. You've done the work. Keep the customer. I cannot stress this part more. More of you do not focus on this than anything else. The biggest failure in almost 100% of businesses is that you do not focus enough on the existing customers. Keeping them in the schedule, doing the dentist clothes, keeping them happy, keeping them relevant, sending them information, helping to continue to educate them on what you do, right? We do gutter cleaning. I'm going to send you something towards that time of year. And we do Christmas lights. I'm going to send you something towards that time of year. I'm going to let you know everything and keep up contact with you. You did all the work to get the customer. You got them happy. You told them what they needed to know. You knew who you were talking to. They love it. They did it. They, they, they're happy with what they got. Now it's up to you to keep them. Keep them happy. That's the big thing. So many people get the customer. They do the work. They don't keep them. The reason door knocking doesn't work, first and foremost, is you show up. They're instantly upset because you're at their house. Do not tell me ever in the history of ever that somebody's like super happy to see you when you come there. Oh, yeah. they're Well, maybe in the beginning they don't like me. But then they're like, well, I'm really happy you came. Wow, really? They ended the conversation that way? You started off by upsetting them. No one who owns a house has ever been happy the stranger showed up trying to sell them something. Ever. Ever. They didn't like it when you showed up either. Now you go through all this stuff. You keep the pressure on to do it right now. Sense of urgency. Do it now. 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 They say, fine, do it. And then you just go and find another customer. And they go, well, I don't know why business isn't working. Well, you didn't create a customer. You didn't create a customer experience. You didn't know who you were talking to. You upset them right away. They finally said yes because they just wanted to end the conversation. And now you don't care about doing them again because guess what? The pressure's not on them. There's a lot of people who are like, well, in door knocking, then I do schedule them the next appointment, and then they call me and go, well, I don't really want to. We decide. Yeah, because they pressured them in the first place. It's the worst way you could possibly get customers. Yeah, I've made a lot of money on it. Yes, you have. That's... Obviously, pressure somebody. If I pull a gun out on somebody, I can make a lot of money. Didn't mean it was a great experience for them. Keep a customer happy. Keep them in your realm. Keep them in your world. Do all the work to get them there. But then keep them happy. Keep them coming back. Spend as much, if not more, on keeping the customers than you do with getting new customers. And that's it. If you could ever say like it's a simplified thing, it is. That was simplified. 30 minutes, you listened, it all made sense, but it's up to you to implement this stuff. I don't know anything. I'm just some dude who sits here 
in front of a screen, right? But I'm telling you, try it. Worst thing you can do is try some of these things and go, eh, it didn't really work. But you got to do it confidently. Don't try it for two seconds and then go, oh, this doesn't work. Right, you, did, you, didn't, you weren't perfect at it right away. It's like water fed. People get water fed and then they go on their first job without trying anything. They're like, it didn't work. No, it did work. You didn't work. You didn't do it right. You know, it's like squeegeeing the first time. It's going to turn out poorly. With all concepts in business, you have to do it and practice it and be confident. Get it into the rotation. Seamus plug, again. I would love to put your orders in. It's what I do, man and ma'am. And I want you to be a cool kid. By the way, if you want a limited edition Cool Kid sticker, let me know. And uh, in your order, I will put a Cool Kid sticker in. We're on the third iteration. The only people who have Cool Kid stickers are ones who put orders in with me. So, kind of going to be a cool kid. But uh, my number is 862-312-2026. It's a sell. Call. Text is even better. I'm on the phone all day, every day. And uh, put everything in your cart if you want. If you like that. Make sure you're logged in and just click save this cart. Shoot me a text. Yo, Jersey, it's in my cart. I'll do the rest. It costs you not a penny more. And I, you know, get to continue living my lavish lifestyle of Costco t-shirts and hair gel. So thank you so much for doing that. I uh, really do appreciate it. And again... I think every window cleaner on the planet should have the American Window Cleaner magazine. I'm partial because I own the magazine, but it's phenomenal. Phenomenal. So much good information. Just the stuff we talk about, you're, you're already listening to the podcast. Get a magazine. It's got the same stuff. It's got articles. It's got business building things. It's got ideas, concepts. It's got pictures, but new products. It's got window cleaning stickers. Be a nerd like me. Get into it. Surround yourself. Go to awcmag.com. Get a subscription right now. It's $69 for an entire year. And then you have bragging rights of being like a real window cleaner. Right. There you go. Poking the bear. But thanks, everybody, for everything. Really do appreciate it. Thanks for everybody who shares content. Thanks for everybody who shares ideas for content and shows. Thanks, everybody, for buying from me. Just thank you. You guys are amazing. You make my life amazing. And uh, until next week. Go out there and get some customers, but build the concepts, understand the concepts, but more importantly, go out there and be epic.